Thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So we should talk about the unused privilege of class here ourselves. Mm. Uh, I mean, like, I
simple and the toy model to start to play with the relevant parameters to come up with, uh, with genetic programs that can drive simple morphogenetic events. And we, we started thinking about how to in, include uh, uh, modeling in the, in the cycle of uh, design, implementation, testing to make it, to make it uh, the type of cycle. And what I'm going to show you uh, today is a, a successful example of us uh, uh, driving um, morphogenesis in a simple system with, with artificial genetic programs made of receptor mediated communication system and driving morphological outputs in, in special edition. How we have implemented those in cells and in a population system. I do want to say that this is all happening in my lab at the USC, we have a stem cell department uh, in, in sunny Los Angeles. We do synthetic morphogenesis and we are, we are also interested in looking at organoids and, and cell therapy for degenerative disease. I do have a couple of disclosures. I, I come to this with a mixed background of mathematics, developmental biology, and synthetic biology. Father of two young builders. And I am an inventor of uh, synthetic, synthetic knowledge technology that's been patented and uh, do that. Uh, um, So the, the level of the project, the, the story that I'm going to tell you about is uh, kind of a picture of the two different uh, projects uh, that in my mind is, is a single, uh, single unit, but it was started when it was a postdoc in Wendell's lab at UCSF, then carried to the finish line by uh, the uh, postdoctoral fellow Sebastian Toda, and more the computational part uh, is, is being what, what Calvin a very talented research technician in the lab with a biophysics background studying bees and uh, social behaviors is 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 being able to to implement. So brief 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 outline. You know, describe the system that I'm gonna that we have engineered, both the cellular system and the and the computation uh, implementation. We're gonna show that by changing some parameters of the system we can get different uh, structures, and we are how then we I, I touch base on how we are thinking about the scaling the energetic of the system, and and what we want to do uh, next. I do want to say that I'm very hopeful to get some good uh, constructive feedback from from you guys, as especially on this. <coughs> this is a kind of a, in a stage where we, we think we can we have something, but we want to hear from from you guys. So part one the. This system that we, we decided to, uh, to use is a system of, of fibroblast in a non-adhesive environment and that they can solve based on cell cell adhesion and they, they can communicate with a cell cell communication based uh, cell cell contact dependent communication. This is the, these are the cells. Um, so they are in a, they don't, don't, they don't on a surface they don't, they don't stick to and so they, they can weakly interact with each other and they proliferate. So this is kind of the, the blank slate that we engineered to, to generate some form of rearrangement based on the genetic program. In this system, it was known that the differential expression of cadirins, as was shown by myself and others, um, you can you can rearrange the structure of highly adhesive cells across the middle and draw these adhesive cells with the, the outside. Different cadirins would form differential. Uh, Type of structure where they don't like to match each other, they would form, form poles. This is with cells constitutively expressing different levels of this cadirin. In these cells that originally they don't express any at all. So this is the, the kind of mechanical component of the system. The communication component of the system is a is a synthetic uh, 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 cell cycle communication pathway that we need to be invented. It's, it's based on notch uh, signaling. And we have basically replaced both the extracellular domain and the intracellular domain of the receptor so that it would not recognize its own ligand, not activate its own target genes. So now we can decide what is the ligand, we can decide what is the receptor. So this, this, is a, this is a way for us to make cells communicate with each other in a design, 
in the same fashion. And this is highly content dependent, only sells in physical content to the communicator along this channel. And it's also one to dodge signaling, that's when it's else than activating the target genes. And uh, we are going to use two in this, in this system. One is against the GFP, and one is against the C19. This diagram will do anything to the cells by themselves. It doesn't really matter for the purpose of the communication, what these diagrams are. And the target genes, we've used the either they turn on either cadirins, they turn on other light, other ligands of these of these synthetic pathways. So to, we can build a multi cellular method. Uh, so the simplest the simplest of all of our synthetic morphogenetic system is made of two cell types that we mix together. The blue cells express the ligand of this communication pathway. There is the red cells express the receptor and they turn on cadirin gene and cadhering gene in response. That's cell cell addition. Molecules, so you start from blue and red cells mixed, uh, and this system will generate the sorting behavior that, that in a the polar fashion, will will perform the two layer structure, uh, starting from a random state. Uh, this was really the zeroth grade. We moved on to move to more layer structure and polarized structures. Uh, but before I move to that, I wanted to uh, show you how we start to think about implementing in our computational system these, these behaviors. So we turn to cellular pods systems. We don't think it's the best one or necessarily the only one, but that's the one we are going with for now. Uh, so that you probably know better than I do how the, 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 the cells are seen in cellular pods. In cellular pods model, this is with, with the conditional platform. Each cell is made of multiple, there's a lattice, each cell is made of multiple pixels. And then there is movement of the pixel, the single pixel of a cell to simulate cell movement, which is accepted. Uh, there is a trial, each time point there is a trial movement, and that's accepted by the detector based on a mobility function. That's dependent on the energetic of the state before the movement and, and, and after the movement. And so, Basically, the system tries to minimize this, this age energy. And this age energy is made up of three parts. The two <coughs> constraints on the surface and on the volume are kind of just to make the cells sure that the cells have a reasonable uh, shape. And the, kind of the most interesting part biologically for, is for the uh, adhesion that's pretty much dictating, calculating on the surface the contact between the cells and, and, and giving extra uh, more points. So this favoring adhesion works where the cells have uh, poor adhesion between uh, each other. So in, uh, in, a, in a very simple, uh, in, the very, in, a, in a very simple <laughs> example where you are mixing cells that high adhesion between themselves and, and cells that low adhesion between themselves, you start the, from a situation where the are mixed and the system evolves stochastically and the, the green cells that are more adhesive evolves to, to form a structure that minimizes the age of the end. So the then we're showing different uh, adhesion matrices generate different structures. We use a uh, concept of amorphospace to uh, localize the structures in the differentiate them and then the morphospace is a two-bit way where you put the structure based on the amount of sub cell cell uh, contacts. Uh, so if they have a high red, red contacts they're gonna be disposition they have high red and high green green contacts will be there. And so we can map the different structures in this this plane and static uh, view of, uh, of, of the structures in the, the morpho space. What we, what we do in computational is, is, is studying how the, the structures move along this morpho space. We go to the initial condition that's stable that goes towards the uh, stable state. So that's the mechanical component of the system. They said we wanted to simulate communication in this, in this system, and that's something that doesn't come natively with the, with the software. So this 
well. <coughs> Should I step out the wheel? Uh, uh, basically, it's, it's again, it, 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 it is convenient that, that the system knows the boundary of the boundary between the cells, <coughs> because if we want to simulate that there's a contact event and signaling, that, that is stronger if the cells have more surface uh, that are in contact. So you have a sender cell and a receiver cell, and so when they are in contact, the receiver cell is gaining point of response based on, on, on this equation over time uh, that is dependent on this, directly dependent, uh, it's point of fashion with this S, that is the amount of ligand pretty much that, that, that the sender cell has. Amount of surface of, of the receiving cells that is the C is ligand. More, more of that, the more R. So when you put two cells in contact, the cell B starts to expand, and when you separate the cells, the, 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 the signals decrease. The, the, the but, so if you have a lot of cells in contact, this, the response was high. If you have less cells in contact, the response is lower. So this is for simulate the simple, very simple way of simulating the response and communication between cells. We wanted that to kind of link the uh, communication with the changes in cell behaviors. And to do that, we simply introduced a, a threshold in this R, and we say that when, whenever the, the, the response of the cells crosses the threshold, then it becomes a different cell. And so you can define this, this line at this point. And this cell now can have different Vision properties, different utility, different proliferation. So this is a general way to encode the signaling mediated changes in cell behaviors. And we introduced this, this, this notation where we have this network where we have sender cell and receiver cell, and this is the notation which we uh, think about the transition between the cell to cell B to cell B minus. So again to show to, to implement the system where you have a you have a sender cell and a receiver cell inducing high cadherin. This would be the biological representation of the network schematic is what I just showed. And, and the addition matrix at this point is pretty much all low except from the B prime to B prime is going to be high. So what happens over time is that that cell will gain point because they're in contact with the group. That would change the So then, with a, with a kind of a shooting expedition, uh, Calvin was able to uh, match the, the data, the biological data of the fluorescence of uh, the energy so with the simulation to have a, for something that would behave uh, in silico similarly to the biological system. So, Basically, what I showed you in this part is a, is a system that's made of cells that have basic adhesion and cells that exist, communicate with contact dependent signaling. And these two parts is really what we call a duality of, of cells. Cells are both communication uh, system, and information exchange system, and also a mechanical system in the physical uh, world. And combining these two, you can have a problem. So now about building some more interesting uh, uh, structures, multi-layered ones. You start from, a, from a, an implementation in cells. Uh, you start with cells with two cell types. And the first step is a similar condensation of the green cells with the inside. And then the, the green cells start to express not only cadherin, but also a ligand for the blue cells to read and to not arrive. There is the first uh, communication going on from the rounded ligand to the rounded receptor that induces decadeal and so the condensation of the green core. And also the expression of a second ligand. The second ligand is where the ligand then now is able to communicate to the blue cells to turn on the red, the red core. So the bottom blue cells inducing green cells to the center from the core that the green cells are not communicating back to the blue cells for a second, an intermediate layer. This is the action where you can see the external layer of blue cells and the remainder of the core and the intermediate layer. Do you see evidence for increased 
division between cells that express the ligand and the receptors? Yeah, the short answer is yeah, yes. Much weaker than the division between the ligand and the receptors. Right. right. But, but, ah, but, it's but, a, Until now, it was e cadirin on both sides. Now we are doing n cadirin on one side and e cadirin on the other side that have different topic addition. So what we generate this information of the green color again. At the red, they don't stay around, but they form poles because they don't like. system you can cut it, it's much easier actually. Uh, but then, it's, 
there is no mitosis, tries to go back, but it doesn't completely close. And so in the, in the morphospace, it's even it's so hard to go back to where it was. So we are adding back mitosis to try and see. That regeneration. So with this, with this part, they show that thinking about the, the system in these two parts, the signaling part and then the addition part, uh, at this point you can see what changes in, uh, in the addition matrix does to the, the system and how you can drive the system. I'm going to show you something about what I'm going to change the signaling network. Uh, we have implemented the system of data inhibition, which is a uh, system that's <coughs> been encoded with endogenous notch uh, signaling, endogenous content dependent signaling to uh, bifurcate cellular states in a geometrically controlled fashion. With that, we thought that we wanted to start with a single genotype cell and then induce a differentiation of two cell types, and then they would organize it. So this is the synthetic version of the lateral inhibition network. So the receptor is inhibiting its own ligands. And it is bistable, as I said. It generates two cells in a, in a 2D layer. It's Checkerboard pattern, uh, and, and on this in, in this system, we have added the, the fact that one of the two states now have a high vision and the other low. So when we implement it in, in 3D, there is kind of a uh, situation where you start with these gray cells, and then the bifurcate become red and green. Then the green cells start to become highly adhesive, and they form the kind of the core of the system. Kind of a paradox going on in the center because the addition is pulling the cells together, but the network is telling the cells to make a checkerboard. So it's, it's something that we are following up on and we want to see better. That's when, for example, it's clear when we implemented the system in, in the computational model that you can see that the core still is splitting out uh, red cells because. Then, and then they are pushed out as the new genesis. So this was uh, where I showed an example of changing the network instead of changing the addition. Um, and now I, I want to, to kind of share what we are thinking about the, the energetics and how we describe the, the evolution of, of, of the system. And in a sense, we are struck by the fact that during development, there's not just one stable state. It almost feels like there is a, a first uh, uh, kind of relaxation to a stable state, and then something else changes and goes to a different stable state. It's kind of continuous, never-ending uh, search for a, for a kind of stable state. So we try to introduce this idea of, of a, a pseudo potential landscape where we have on the, the plane, on the x-y plane is the morphospace and the, and the z-axis is this pseudo potential. It's just the, uh, the, the, the speed at which these, these two are changing, it's basically. So it's giving an idea of how far from equilibrium we are. So we can, we can map the, uh, of the, of the energy landscape by starting from different initial conditions and relaxing the system to the stable state. And in this simple mind, the view is similar to rolling the ball down on the thermal surface. And for making things uh, interesting in this context, we kind of have a, have a, a system that we've implemented in the, in, the, in the computational system, not yet in the cellular system, but it's a simple system where we have a this simple signaling network of a cell communicating to the neighbors. But now the cell A starts being highly adhesive 
to itself, and then the B starts to be uh, starts low, uh, with low adhesion, and then B is to switch from low to high adhesion. So the system evolves from uh, a randomly mixed uh, red, uh, gray, and blue, and this first part is, is driven by the fact that the A cells, the blue cells are uh, high adhesive, and, and without any signaling. Now the signaling kicks in, and the blue cells turn Cells, the gray cells green, and, and this drives the cells out of this stable state and to this two, two, pole, two pole state. And so, this is how it looks like in the potential uh, uh, landscape. You have the relaxation of the first the mixed uh, structure into the uh, blue cells in, inside, 100% of it goes to there. And then when the signaling kicks in, this state is no longer stable, and it's, it's going up and, and down to this new uh, uh, final stable state. So in the analogy of the ball rolling down, it's as if at this point, this, the signaling is changing the shape of the landscape. And now the, 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 the position where the ball is, is no longer stable, and the ball rolls down to a different point in the, in the moment. Positional system, we can show that the dynamics, the, the relative dynamics between the move cell movements and the cell sacrification can influence the existence of the multiple states, multiple st stable states. Uh, if, if you, you can imagine if the signaling is very, very fast, you don't have time to stop by this intermediate and you go back to the final two. <coughs> but if the signaling is slow and comparable to the movement, you can go through this intermediate and then go. And this could be good to the final state. And this could be important to development as this might be something that you want as an intermediate to create some sort of growth or, or and also space for inclusion when you sometimes you don't want to go with this and you don't want to go to the uh, different developmental project. So in, in more general terms we want to ask this question how do how can we control the movement in the morpho space and we think that mapping the energetic landscape is going to be important. And it occurred to us that there is an analogy between a classical stem cell uh, landscape, it's the Waddington landscape where you start from a stem cell and you and the idea is that you go towards stable states that are different according to the signals that the cells receive. Uh, in a, in a, and then these, these cell types are stable by themselves. And so similarly, we're thinking that, that during morphogenesis, you start from a morphous aggregate and you go through an intermediate and to different stable states depending on the, on the genetic circuit and the interaction. So we are asking ourselves what can we say about the Energetic of the system, and especially interested in seeing how we can use that to control uh, the system and, and as it goes through this multi step uh, projector. Last, last bit, what I want to talk about Sorry. is uh, that we are, you know, escape us that our structures are kind of just structures, they don't do much. Of, of function, and that as a contrast, uh, uh, embryos and, and, and tissues, when, when they are built, they, they, they are built and, and they do some function. Uh, and, and we're actually thinking that, that that is a very interesting way of, of making a feedback. And several talks today, uh, making, uh, and others were speaking to the, to the feedback that, that entails uh, function and, and, and structure. And, and we think that the genetic programs, whenever they have such a close feedback that can generate a lot of diversity, the genetic program is only there to provide this, this fuel to, 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 to diversify. So what we are trying to do in this space is trying to generate synthetic pathways where we have control of, of differentiation, of generation of the function of cell types downstream of, of our synthetic social communication that we can control. So we Special transcription path actually was shown, shown for a while that you can generate and 
move, actually move the cells in the body to landscape. This is shown from fibroblast to phagomycite or, or, or induced from specifically from stem cells to specific cell types. So we started making muscles with this uh, cell uh, with, this, with different synthetic ligands out of fibroblasts, and we are making neurons, uh, motor neurons, uh, out of IPS. And this it is interesting to mention that we picked uh, these examples as they were kind of the lowest hanging fruit for us, so the easiest. It turns out that it is likely that, that some of the first uh, multicellular system had some of these uh, cell types, muscles, neurons, and epithelial cells. So maybe also evolution thought that, that those were the lowest hanging fruit and So what? I'm in a stem cell and regenerative medicine department, so we're trying to see if we can use uh, this synthetic morphogenesis system to nucleate the formation of functional uh, organoids, and uh, especially in the cardiovascular uh, system. And that is going to be very interesting to see. But with the functional, if the functional feedback starts to kick in, and it's just going to be different from uh, fluid uh, flow. Driving treatment by the way that So, did mention that not only the uh, cell types that we picked up were probably the first ones in the first multicellular system, but also the cell cell communication system and, and the vision seems to be uh, something that was really well present in the first cellular system and we are learning a lot about how people are thinking and have been thinking about evolution of multicellularity and we now feel like we are in the place of, uh, of, of, kind of simulating evolution of implementing uh, genet genetically driven multicellularity and a lot of these, these principles are, are what we are going for to, to implement in, in, in. So you are conclude by repeating the, our guiding principle that's been guided, <coughs> guided us for implementing this, this uh, system, uh, implementing cell cell communication with, with cell cell content signaling, driving morphological outputs and all the feedback that that entails, driving self-organizing developmental trajectory, and we show simple morphogenesis, and we hope that this is going to go at the, at the help our, us understanding ourselves and our own development and uh, and that, that, thank you and get those questions I was wondering whether you have start to play with the with the lens the the duration of the signaling by, by playing with the stability of the of the transcription factors that that, that is cut actually yeah uh, Fighting the program, the cells have hardwired into them. Which raises the question: sort of, what's the right chassis to build this type of system in, and how do you identify when it's sort of going off the rails? That's my question. My, my, my comment was: uh, at the end, when you're comparing sort of the evolution of morphospace to Wadding's hypo hypothesis, I noticed that you put time as one of your axes, and I wonder if you could comment on. Do you think that's the right um, axis, or should it be structure? Um, in that case. Okay, so this comment is something more like this. Uh, Sorry. So that's okay. I like it. Uh, so you can get 
in, in, in this way, I mean, I have claimed all the structure in this. So, we want to see what happens. I mean, it, I mean in, this could be a multi dimensional. It's much better than just one dimension. In, in a similar vein, that, that the set type is not defined by just. <coughs> I guess my point would be that in in the models, the changes in cell type and their properties is predicated upon them getting to the right spot uh, to receive a signal. And so yeah. is that sort of what determines when the next stage of the program happens? I think that's in the shape of the of the, of the landscape itself. That's what the you know, program and the physical uh, parameters that The question was, question was uh, how do you pick, uh, you pick the chassis? So these, the, the L cells were picked because they were very really simple and a lot was known about how to change. So we knew we were fighting against the system or something else. And the way I'm thinking about this is that we want to kind of control uh, genetic programs and uh, if, if they are happening, so we want to be mindful of what the cells do endogenously and try to uh, hope that uh, direction. Uh, it, is, is, it was shown with, with the programming and, and, and everything that cells are, yes, opinionated on what they So the, the, the you have they're quite different, I think, from how developmental systems usually work. So have you thought about whether you can program them to do sort of more natural developmental things, like maybe folding epithelial sheets or getting active migration of cells in a particular direction? Yeah, yeah, these are these are about what you're doing to the time scales in your system as you go through adhesion space. So, you know, I think Mel Steinberg chose that cell line he did because they behave like liquids all the time, sort of no matter what you do, right? But sort of like a follow-up to your question is sort of saying, well, if I want to actually have longer time scales or have buckling or something, I'd want a cell type that could actually solidify. Yeah. And you sort of happen to chose I mean, it's, for your system, it's actually really good because yeah. in cellular POTS models, generically, there is a fluid solid transition as a function of adhesion in them. And so you must be in a region of parameter space to model this sort of Malstrom Steinberg cell line yeah. where it's always fluid. And then I'm sort of curious about have you thought about trying to sort of go towards a cell type or a system where you can have more control, where, where there's coupling between the adhesion and the sort of time scales of rearrangement. I, it was in my mind the first your talk and this is talk pushed me more in the, the directions.
is uh, like